My name is Wesley Hicks and this is my story. I struggle with chemical dependency and, and alcoholism and self-worth and pain and grief. I can probably keep on going with that list, but I guess you get the picture. Uh, my first time doing drugs was when I was 17 years old, and, and I've struggled on and off uh, with addiction to either marijuana or, or pain medication or alcohol or really anything that would just help me to get my next fix until uh, I was 31 years old. And it was constantly a battle of, of trying to be numb to what my life felt like. You know, growing up, I, I didn't have a father. Uh, you know, and even in church, um, I was abandoned or looked at as someone that was without value because we were very poor. And, you know, I was the kid without a dad. And I can remember just hating everything in my life, really wanting to not feel what I felt. So my first area of, of rescue for that was to find drugs, and, and I enjoyed it. Uh, drugs were something that um, didn't cure the pain, but if I did enough drugs, or if I drank enough, or if I slept with enough girls, then, then the real thing is, is maybe I would just be numb and not feel it. And for a while that was true. I, I didn't feel all those pains, but eventually the baggage of, of my life, of my sin, of my addiction began to build up around me. I can think back to all of the collateral damage that I placed in my family's life, in my life, uh, the people that I worked with. I can think of all the hearts that are broken and I can think of all the self-inflicted pain uh, from my past. But there was a day when, uh, that sticks out in my mind the most, and it was a day that I got busted uh, for my addiction by uh, my now wife. And she was broken, she was so hurt. And I can remember calling my family and, and kind of filling them in on something that they've heard before and letting them know, that, hey, I've messed up again. And I'll never forget, uh, I'll never forget my mom. My mom, her voice had cracked and, and I knew that I'd shattered her heart. And then I got on the phone with my sister and, and I remember her just point blank saying, you can't come around our family anymore. And, and at that point, I was empty. I didn't have anything left. I was broken. And, and I knew it was time to, that I reached out to someone that could help me. And, and you know, I, I did grow up in church, and I knew that Jesus was the only way that I could be rescued. But, but honestly, I didn't, I didn't know how Jesus applied to addiction. I just didn't get it. Uh, you know, He can save you, but can He help the addict? Uh, so, you know, I began going to a recovery group, and, and uh, slowly but surely, over the, a few months, I began to realize that there's some parts about me that, that I need to deal with, that my addiction isn't really the issue as much as the source, which is my own broken heart, my own sinful heart. And, and until I opened up the doors and allow Christ to, to clean those rooms, uh, I would always be sick. I would always be um, living out my addiction as my way to, I guess, display my sinful nature. And I began to seek godly counsel through other men, surround myself in a recovery community, and, and work the 12 steps. And a few months in, um, I still hadn't gotten it. There, there were times when I would still, I would drive to a dealer's house and be ready to buy something. and. And I would just sit in, the, in their driveway and be like, you know, this is this is silly. I don't know what I'm doing. And I can remember the last time that, that happened, I, I sat there for 45 minutes and I thought, this is not the life that I want. This is not the life that God designed me to have. 
And I can remember going to my next 12-step class and, and, and really just saying, guys, I think I get it. Like, I'm an addict. I figured it out after about 14 years of living in addiction. And it was that moment whenever I, I realized that I was broken, that there was something in my heart that needed to be repaired and it was something I needed to trust Jesus with. That, that was the moment that I could begin the, the steps to healing, the steps for recovery, that I began to become a whole person. You know, Jesus wants us to experience joy in this life, joy in Him. He wants us to, to feel wholeness in Him, wholeness in Christ is, is available to all of us. And, and I think for so long I, I, I had this picture that there's nothing about me that deserved wholeness or joy, and there was nothing about me that was lovable. And the only way I could deal with it was with medication or unhealthy relationships. And, and I guess the moment when Jesus got a hold of my heart, that I knew that that was all a lie. It was all a lie that Satan had placed in my heart in my life and I believed it and I ate every bit of it up and, and whenever Jesus took over whenever I let him show me these truths then I began to walk a path that leads me toward wholeness every day and I'm not there yet I don't believe that I'll ever get there in this lifetime but I do believe that tomorrow I'll be one day closer and the day after that I'll be another day closer and in 10 years I'll be 10 years closer to wholeness and the cool part is, is all this baggage that I had that led me down this lifestyle, down this path of, of hurt and of pain. All of those things, you know, are still there. I just don't carry them anymore. Like those memories have never left or gone. It hasn't changed my past, but my past doesn't own me. And when things happen, now, I know that I have someone that I can go to directly and and that I know that He wants well for me. And I can tell you that, you know, in this recovery, not everything's been perfect. Um, I am sober. I do have uh, almost three years of clean time now uh, without drinking or drugs. Um, but I can tell you that I went through absolutely one of the hardest things, the most difficult things in my life since being sober. And I can tell you that I made it through without using drugs or alcohol because I have a God that loves me and because I learned how to trust Him.